<laughs> what you got for tonight? Say, I can't do it. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah Jinsa tu ke bi ishq hai Could there be a reason we are feeling a lot of anxiety this month? Is this a test? So let's yeah, I would imagine. It's a month of zilzala that uh, anxiety and, and energy, if, if you're an anxious person then that's not a fair question because you probably feel anxious every month. But if you're saying that, no you're not anxious but for why am I feeling anxious this month? And again because of the, the dress of the month and a very majestic energy that uh, imagine an energy that comes and can crush and open things. So means it's a, it's a very majestic and jalali, tajalli of the month that Allah crushes things to bring out its realities, split apart things to bring out its realities. So alhamdulillah and it's the month right before the hajj that's opening now in the next uh, few days where the month of Zul Hajj begins to open and that becomes uh, after 12 months of spiritual practices Allah ends uh, the pilgrimage of every year and then re-begin again in Muharram another year of travelling towards the Divinely Presence. So this is a immense month opening up in which Allah gives the rewards of the journeying like arriving at Allah's Divinely oasis. After 12 months of spiritual practices and tests and zikrs and everything that people have been going through, this is the month of the oasis opening Zul Hajj in which they're coming labbaik, Allahumma labbaik and everyone making intention because we made the intention from Muharram. Now you don't have to go physically if you don't have the means or the ability but we are at a continuous hijrah. So we made the intention for our hijrah in Muharram last year when we began that we step with our right foot that we're making intention to move towards your Divinely Presence Ya Rabbi. So that was the intention for hajj, hajj is a hijrah which means pilgrimage. So we've been going through the 12 months and the reality. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nur John, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. of these 12 months is a pilgrimage with the soul to the presence of the Divinely Presence which is within the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah and in the qalb of that reality is the reality of La ilaha illallah, inshaAllah. So it has a, a tremendous amount of energy and practices inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa rahmatullah As you mentioned the angelic reality of water, what happens in the world of light when a water well is built after the names of holy souls? Anything that we do for the sake of holy souls it has a continuous flow for us. So would imagine that we make a well and a dedication to Prophet his holy companions, his holy Ahlul Bayt and family that that becomes a 
perpetual fountain from the oceans of Kawthar, especially from the people whom know. So when the shaykhs are involved they're asking from realities, they're not asking from common people. Every practice they do, every, every step they make is not from common people. So when they're making wells they're asking Allah as we providing water for these servants whom are in need, grant us from your eternal wells and the fountains of your eternal reality. And what better than to have from that reality than the hand of Sayyidatina Fatima Tuzari salam. So, oh, mashaAllah in my name you put 2,000 wells on this earth and inshaAllah by the end of our life 10,000, 50,000. Then what do you think your, your presence with her salam, is? How much she blesses you for that, for all of eternity. Even Allah make one well for you from the kafthar is for all of eternity because Allah's bounty it doesn't end, your well doesn't finish so now your well in paradise it ran out. But you use dunya, fi dunya hasanat wa akhirah hasanat wa kin adhab an nar. How awliya use this ayatul kareem is that, oh the dunya people say, Oh my Lord give me goodness in this world and give me goodness in the hereafter and protect me from fire. Say, no, awliya come and say, no make my dunya to be a means to build my akhirah. That the goodness of my world every brick should be building my paradise reality. So in your reality you want a home you make a masjid. You want to loof the stations, make the the sharif. You want to drink from fountains of kawthar, give people water. Allah going to give you better water. Say, Ya Rabbi I gave them from the, the water of this earth, I supported that well. Where well, Allah wants to give you a well on your little house in paradise? Or it says, I give you from the best of water I have. Let me give you from the kawthar because you're also lover of Sayyidina Muhammad lover of the holy companions and Ahlul Bayt. So means awliya are operating at a completely different level. They don't need the student to know because their intention is at the level that their shaykhs have inspired within their heart and that Prophet has inspired within their heart. Look if somebody does a mawlid alhamdulillah immense blessings. But when Shaykh Dagestan is saying, no you use my name and make intention to do a mawlid with my name, I'm going to grant you for every mawlid you do nine years of seclusions with me as if you've been dressed from a nine year seclusion with me, right? Their knowledges are different than common people. Even in beatific actions when they know haqqaiqs and they made intentions based on those haqqaiqs then they're counting on that dressing because the word of their shaykh is true and when they meet their shaykh they're gonna say, I want my nine years. I want my darajat for the every day I did the zikr, I sat with them three days a week and I want these realities. He says, oh I was kind of joking just to motivate you. No, <laughs> these are people of truth. So it means their intention is what people should be looking for. If you find a common person and see what their intention is but that's, that's not what we're interested in. We found extraordinary people that Allah inspired us to be from and to be with and as a result we followed them because extraordinary events, extraordinary understandings and intentions. Anybody who supports our mawlid is supporting the mawlid from Shaykh Tavastani's expression that you'll be granted nine years of seclusions with me. This is written for us with our faith is what we are moving to Allah's Divinely Presence. Ya Rabbi my shaykh said it, that's what I'm intending, this is what I'm expecting. So imagine then what type of dress that is. So when you're a person teaching about the realities of kawthar, do you think that the water flowing from that well is going to be any, any water in paradise, just regular water? No, it's going to be Hassani wal Husayni, it's going to be from the Ahlul Bayt. The same Ahlul Bayt that inspired you to listen to the representative on this earth, a representative that do it and we're going to make wells for you in paradise that all your jat will drink from and receive their realities, quench their sicknesses and their burdens. 
that you can't imagine when a well flows for you, if Allah ask you to intercede for a relative through their difficulty from that water and that well that Allah grant us from that water to dress all our descendants, take any azab, any difficulty, any affliction away from them in their paradise realities. So we use the world to achieve a very high reality in akhirah. We don't just teach it, you should think that every step of the way, every bite of food that you eat during these associations and with the intention of these associations, they're not normal food. Every, every bite has an intercession, every, every letter and word and haqqaiq that being taught intercedes for your soul for all of eternity. They taught you alif, lam, mim. For all of eternity Allah is opening those huruf upon the soul of that servant because they heard it. So it's something that can't be imagined, that's why we in our lives we try to follow them. And it wasn't easy because the overwhelming tide is that Allah begins to challenge all the people whom are following to see how much they really believe in you, we're going to test them. So then you watch like Lord of the Rings. Any bad scenes you leave it out, why? Because everyone's going to find a Gandalf in their life and you're going to hold tight. You're not going to fi find five Gandalfs because the movie wasn't like we go a little bit here then we find another one, then we go a little bit here we find another one. You say, I find this shaykh, I take from his realities and I hold tight and I go all the way to the end. And along the path what happens? All the demonic orcs that they may look like humans to you but they play a role from Allah. You think of their kind people, good people, the people of zikr people and the, they have an ayat al kareem when Allah was describing the dhikr people and said, these are the chosen people of yours, they're causing problems. See, yeah, I mean they play a role like an orc that bother you, distract you, try to misguide you. And your role is to stay on that path, hold on to that shaykh and get to your destination. You didn't think, oh I was going to find a shaykh and everything was going to be great, the whole world would praise us. The, what happened to the role of shaitan in all of this? He's actually very angry. So he stands on every corner of that path to distract you, distract you, don't follow him, leave, leave. So this is the, the way, istiqamu fi tariqatit where Allah gives to us in Surah the jinn that hold firm your tariqah, your path. The one whom your heart bound and is binded to that you believe, you follow, you understand, you take the daily guidance, hold tight and get to the end of your journey, try to survive it. If you bounce around and jump around then it becomes difficult for the person. And that's why you see in every movie, follow the yellow brick road, right? You follow the yellow… but they, it, they didn't la allow them just to go and ahlan wa sahlan. But every shaitan is coming from every direction because that's shaitan's role. Is that, are you kidding me? You think you're going to get to the end? I'm going to confuse you. I'm going to come hit in front of you. I'm going to confuse from behind you to the right of you, to left of you and if that's not enough I'm going to confuse you from above and from below. So never lose your guard, hold tight to the one whom your heart is connecting to. That you feel the connection, you feel the affinity with the knowledges and the teachings because you can't make your heart do something it doesn't want to do. Listen to other people and I was like, oh. What are you talking about? You can't force my heart to do that. My heart already understands what it's supposed to do, it's already locked and uh, you follow your heart through thick and thin and through every type of difficulty and every type of storm, the heart always keeps locked on inshaAllah. Wa salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, you have taught us that the light world is constant and the world of form is under its command. Does it mean my soul must have known you and must be seeking for you as its guide? 
You must be sitting with the soul of that shaykh in the malakut. There's no way that you could sit with him in the world of form without that, right? Because the world of light commands the world of form. You don't find anything from here to reach mysteriously to there. So that's what we said, Rahim controls Rahman, not Rahman leads you to Rahim. Uh, what do we have? What was Surah Yaseen? Kulli shay wa malakut kulli shay is all encompassing the Rahim. Why? Because Allah made the heavenly light, the world of light, it allows the world of form to manifest. So what do scientists know now is it called the atomic reality. If you don't have any atoms which is your malakut, could you have a form? But what is your form standing up on? Your form actually isn't even a form, it's just your atoms spinning so fast they give the illusion of form. So these are for the kids if they studied a little bit of science at school. Your form is an illusion, there's nothing there, it's your atoms and electrons spinning. As a result the hologram gives an image of a form. So then what really happened? Your form doesn't exist, your light exists and energy exists and that exists by a vibration and a sound. So of course then the malakut controls the world of form. So can you be sitting with the shaykh in the, in the world of form but you're not with him in the world of light? That doesn't make sense anymore, that, that's not logical at all because how could you be with a vibration that powerful but in your reality you're not with that vibration. And that's why they, they, they vibrate together in which Prophet described like a uns and that for that time they were like uh, battalions in an army. Means that when you're in that battalion it's because you feel a familiarity with them. But the haqqaiq of it, the reality of it is actually you're vibrating at that vibration. Your energy is already in that ocean with that shaykh, in that reality in malakut because their reality is an eternal reality, ancient and qadeem. So the shaykh is 40 years old, it has nothing to do with 40 years old, that soul is thousands of years old. Sayyidina Mawlana Shah Naqshaban at six years old was sitting in Diwan and Anbiya and addressing Sayyidina Musa Why? Because he's six years old or no? In that Diwan his soul is an ancient soul. The physicality was six years old but that didn't mean that's what Sayyidina Musa saw. Sayyidina Musa saw his ancient soul talking to him. So it means the malaku, the form and the world of light are completely two different things. How ancient and what is the image of this person in the world of light? And in this world of form you may see them as a child or an adult or an old person. So it means these are completely different realities but know that the world of light commands the world of form. And anyone in this world of form sitting with these people of these realities, they must be sitting with them in the world of light. And in their majlis they're attuned to those specific shaykhs. So we came across many shaykhs in our life but our heart didn't vibrate with that. So whom our heart was connected to you can't disconnect because it's already in that malakut locked in that reality. It's not for you to, to reconnect, it's not for you to connect and disconnect from in the world of form. It's not something that's possible. People can try to force it but it just doesn't happen because you're emanating in the world of light in that reality, in their association, in their majlis flowing from their realities. And each of them different realities and all of them in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Because each one plays a role in where they are. So in their association they take from Prophet 
and they represent this reality to these people. Another takes from that reality and represents the reality to a different people. And that's why in this reality Prophet is describing for every sickness Allah has a cure. Meaning what? Physical or spiritual? Physical sickness, okay, but more important is spiritual sickness. Means that for every spiritual sickness Allah has a cure and the cure is going to be through specific people. Not every shaykh has the cure for everyone, their cure is for their area and their region. So it means Allah has different shaykhs in different areas with different cures because the people that they deal with are under different sicknesses and, and difficulties. So you may go into Africa and they completely do things differently. Why? Because Prophet is guiding them that in this region do like this. So the medicine that being dispelled may not be relevant, the general teaching no problem. So it means that for everywhere Allah has a pharmacy and a medicine and a doctor. It's not, it's not cheap and not uh, poor that there can only be one. So Allah has all of these set up and that's why then whom your heart resonates with you follow. And once you follow and make your connection you feel that your heart becomes autopilot, it's following. It's very difficult to break away because the heart has locked on inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah What is the scientific wisdom behind Mulana stating there's also a black hole in an atom? Also is there any relation to shaking, quaking of soul in an atom? And lastly, did CERN open another dimension? You hear we got it all in one, one question. That Importance of a black hole is the reality of Prophet that they, they understand the black hole as you enter and everything is gone. This is what we call fana, the one whom takes you and annihilates you into dust. But it can't be gone because they're taking you to a higher existence. So means that if you come with a form the responsibility is to disintegrate you like a Star Trek beam me up, right? Why did Allah show these technologies? In Star Trek what would happen? Their concept of moving through time and space when they would break down all of the atoms of the person, move them through time and space and reconfigure like a fax machine or like a 3D printer, take the information, break it down to its molecular level, send it through device and then reconstitute the individual back. But this is from the haqqaiqs of the fana that mahiyya dunub, the one whom crushes all sins and, and errors and everything wrong before reaching Allah Prophet one of his immense realities is then ocean of Muhammad to destroy everything, annihilate everything. And as a result of its annihilation means they disintegrate into nothing and then Prophet will take them back to the other side of the veil in which they become baqi, baqa, fanai wal baqa means they become existent and revitalized and rejuvenated in a new reality. One reality has to die for the new reality to be born, right? So what Allah described as Sayyidina Musa When he was seeking that reality, he was seeking these understandings and then he asked to see from that reality. He said, you can't see me but I show you my signs, why? Because the reality of Prophet is a black hole. What did the, that reality do to Sayyidina Musa Completely annihilated him in which they say he qashiyah, he was out. But in reality he became powdered out, 
his whole entire reality was annihilated and Prophet brought him back into a different reality and become now Muhammadiyoon. On earth he wanted to reach that reality, not in his akhirah. On earth he became Muhammadiyoon and anna awwal al muslimin and reconstituted and regave his shahada in the presence of that reality with whole new reality dressed upon. So means the concept of the black hole in their sciences is they don't understand why all these lights are melting in that reality. And that is a deep reality for the presence of Prophet which Allah says that we show you on the horizon and you'll know within yourself. So look on the horizon they were astonished. But only a teaching that's within ourselves, these aren't the lataif of the qal. That when we're journeying into the presence, why are we journeying to the presence of Prophet Because he's the only one to love, the most beautific one to love because that love is really the love of Allah right? So he's going to take you to La ilaha illallah. Well, how does he take you to the presence of La ilaha illallah? Is he's going to make Muhammadun Rasulullah vanish? Because now you're coming into his divan the heart. He's going to annihilate your presence into a nothingness and then take you into the presence of La ilaha illallah. He's the only one who can disintegrate even your light and your existence into non existence. Because for what Allah described, Prophet Qud huwa. In the haqqaiqs of who is the complete non-manifest and non-existence, he, the non-manifest he of Allah that can't be understood. So it's a he that never manifested because Allah has no form, no direction, no, no image. So then that huwa of Prophet is the one whom annihilates the servant into nothingness to take them to La ilaha illallah. But that's pretty deep, most people will be lost thinking about that. So the reality when Qul huwa, when Allah is saying this is a huge title, this is beyond imagination that the complete non-manifest of Allah is talking and giving that title to that reality of Prophet And that's why sincerity can only be achieved from Prophet How can anyone become sincere? Allah didn't dress anybody from Qul huwa Allahu ahad Allahu samad. The Surat al kareem is for Prophet So anyone from Prophets to angels who want to achieve sincerity have to go through Muhammadun Rasulullah that's why Isra wal Miraj, that all the Prophets were in need of the presence of Prophet to achieve their, their identity and their reality, inshaAllah. Wa salatul maqribna, inshaAllah subhanahu rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon, wa salaamun al mursaleen, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa, bi siri Surat al Fatiha. InshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum Sayyidi, could your energy practices bring out your negative energy to manifest as insects and the like around you? If so, what should you do to prevent that? In your practices bring out all your negative energies, yeah. Uh, that's the whole concept, right? If I do salawats and start making ikhfar, th that everything hiding inside of me has to come out. So if you take your home and it's infested and I'm going to put one of these spray things, you leave the can open, spray, what happens? Uh, you're going to look out your door and all these bugs are running out and the ones inside got killed. So that's the whole concept of purifying oneself is one we want to destroy all these inner demons and the other ones let them run. 
if they're stronger and they can escape, they'll escape. You want to create an atmosphere that they fierce like a fire for them, not a, not a resort for them. Most people want to make a, a resort for demons within themselves. The demons are lounging and, and, and so uh, entertained <laughs> and they're having a good time. But if you make your durood, your salawat and these practices, they create a tremendous energy and the shaitans have to leave. They just… they don't want to deal with that energy, they'd rather go next door to somebody else. So that's why this protection is in this durood. So when they're making their salawats, it is our protection. It is an alarm system and a fire within the heart, the shaitans burn and will push away from it and away from that person. And every sickness, every, every healing is going to be based on their durood sharif. Because remember the shaykhs they live by this, they, they know speaking philosophy, they live by it. When they're sick they have to increase their durood, when they have difficulties they have to increase the durood sharif because then more and more negativity is coming towards them. So this is the, the immense love of Prophet that they love and they rely upon that love, they're nourished by that love. So that is the jins that's your protection, that's your value to Allah That's very deep right? All these people they want to argue about their madhab, this madhab, this guy, that guy. You think that they're going to go and ask you those questions in the heaven? The, your ikhtilaf and differences between this and that, you think that was the, the goal of Islam and, and the goal of your soul been sent onto this earth? Out of 500 million siblings you got the ticket to come and exist, right? In the womb of your mother one seed was fertilized, 500 million to one and that Allah brought you into existence so that you could find the ikhtilaf between madhabs. This is how petty the, the, the heavens must be, they have nothing else to do. Or you were supposed to come and find, where's Allah hidden? Because I'm a hidden wanting to be known, wanting to be known. If Allah didn't want to be known then the whole course would be irrelevant. But Allah says, I'm a hidden treasure. So He even gives us the word treasure as, this is valuable and I want to be known. So it means then the goal of the soul was to achieve that. But if you have a fasiq, if you have a, a, a dirty body you can't achieve any reality. So you have to discipline, you have to cleanse, you have to clean because you're going to use the body to achieve your paradise reality for dunya hasinat wa akhirah hasinat. So same philosophy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a well for my paradise reality. I'm going to do my practices for my paradise reality. So then they prepare themselves but they don't get stuck on it, they don't overemphasize it, they don't start to go into the points of it. Why? Because that was, that was the level of sharia but tariqah was higher. Min kulli ma yughalifu sharia min kulli ma yughalifu tariqah min kulli ma yughalifu al-marifah wa min kulli ma yughalifu al-haqiqah. So sharia was the lowest level, you should have learned that. You should have understood it by following a, a Kamil shaykhs in which they gave you enough sharia, say so you got it down. You know how to wash? Yeah, we know how to wash. You know how to do pray? Yeah, we know how to pray. We know all of these things, it's enough. Now your real fight is go now towards your marifa. Take your tariq and now move towards marifa. That was the be- real battle. Not to sit with people and say, How many cups of water we need for your wudu to be nullified? So that was not tariqah. Why bring tariqah down now like that? So this is a, the, the deep reality because they understood they have to achieve these states of love. So the greater ba- battle lies ahead, 
who I stay at the… at this kindergarten when the greater battle lies ahead. When they fight against themselves, they start to perfect their character, they understand what bad character is. Because if you raise a, a group of students in tariqa focusing on sharia which they should have learned the basics of sharia but they should have gone towards marifa, tariqa, marifa, haqiqa, azima, then what happens? They never reach towards fighting themselves, cleaning themselves, taking away their bad actions. And that's why you see them then they post backbiting, they post every type of gossip and, what the heck is this? These are shaykhs and representatives of people, backbiting, gossiping. These are very low level, there's no tariqah, this is not the people of Maqam al ihsan And that's why when you're focusing on the wrong thing, this is what happens. Because the students are not entering into the battlefield of marifah. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. What should we do if we try to do accounting but shaitan is making us to forget what happened throughout the day? I don't think that's possible. Take, take notes throughout the day. If there's anything significant, if there's not significant, yeah. Walk down here, I had a sandwich, I had lunch and those things are minor but you write down anything that you think that was inappropriate or not right or I spoke inappropriately to people, I agitated somebody, all of these things. So the, these are the real muhasaba in which the person is to take an account of themselves and where they did something wrong, most likely when they enter home where people who know how to push your buttons, not the street. Because you did your accounting from the time you got and went here, so I didn't care about anybody, I didn't look at them, I don't care what they said to me, you think I am, I'm going to write down that, oh the people at Target were looking at me funny. No, it's when you enter into your home and everyone in the home has your button and they're each pressing it, <laughs> those are what they're the real muhasaba and the real issues are. But that again its remedy is in salawats because the stronger your salawats, the stronger your energy, you're prepared for it. You have more energy to control your shaitans from yelling back, re replying back to answering back <coughs> so that it doesn't become Armageddon. So these are, these are the, the works upon the inner self, right? So the, the realm of sharia is the circle. When we draw the graphics of this path, the circle is sharia. So everybody has to learn the basic concept, how you wash yourself, how you clean yourself, how we pray, basic so that you're, you're relevant. But tariqah is now you're going to make a line from the circle to the center and that's called the path. The radius is your tariqah. Which path are you taking to the center? They all lead to the center, which one are you going? If you take a path that goes to the outside, you basically went into space, you know what that is. Everyone's going into the center towards the presence of the Divine, that's tariqah. Every step is marifa and haqiqah that they're all based on realities. So you have to be ma'arif, people who know. Where were… because you, where are you facing? I'm facing the center so you're headed towards to be an arif, a knower. Every step is a haqqaiq, marifa and then azim from the, the immensity of the center and reaching towards that. So what are you on? If you sit with a group of people who only talk about sharia, you're on the circumference. And they can talk for years, my goodness they can take out hadith books and get people to try to memorize it. Again basic, basic, Mawlana Shaykh Nazim's way is basic. You should have understood the basics of sharia so that you're operating correctly, you follow the shaykh, you pray, you do everything correctly. You, you are defined by your sharia. But 
where, where did you start taking your tariqah? And everyone says, oh we're on this tariqah, this tariqah, this tariq. Okay, well then what's your marifa if you're on that tariqah? So no, no, we don't, we don't teach any marifa. So then you're not a tariqah then. You understand where we're going with that? Because the tariqahs were all about marifa. So many now are just, they say the tariqahs, they don't teach any marifa. So what do you have is you have a bunch of people who think they're tariqahs but they become the ahlul shari'ah and they fight and argue about everything. Because this was the history of the people of Sharia. You know that when the, the punishment of the madhabs was the arrival of the Wahhabis. So all ulama agree that when Allah wanted to punish the <laughs> people of the madhabs, He brought the Wahhabis because they built the schools of each of the madhabs around the Kaaba and literally they would make tawaf and beat each other, right? Now Hanafi would begin to make tawaf, he would pass the Shafi school and begin to argue that, why you follow, well, is this wrong, it's like this, this like that and then start punching each other. Then two of them would go to the next house and who, who's, who's that, that uh, Maliki and then begin to attack and this was the history of it. Because dunya its rule is what? To divide. We taught that at the beginning, singularity only occurs in the, in the world of light. Material world it was what, what's the word for that? The opposite of singularity, multiplicity. Multiple is, is dunya, it's by its nature, that's the, the origin of this world is to create cups and separate everything. I am me, you are you. And this is why always the sharia if you stay only on the circumference what happens? Not that you don't learn sharia, that's, that's, that's like not mentally retarded people, is that we said you understood sharia and I took your journey, step, step off. Step off the circumference and now enter on to the tariqah and keep making sure that you're on your sharia, you, you didn't become fasiq and fake and you didn't uh, violate your laws, that's a given. You don't go 100 miles an hour, you have to know how to drive. Once they give you a driver's license, it's assumed you know how to drive. Can you imagine if the police pulled you over five minutes and said, come on give us a proof. So what was the purpose of my license? So shaykh is licensed. So you don't have to keep taking his ID, they prove to us you know how to drive. Hit them in the head and say, what are you talking about? Because I have a license here, they already proved they know how to drive, we're way beyond that. So it means that then there should be a tariqah. The tariqah then is based only on marifa, that the, all the students have to be moving towards the center. With what? What's the food for their marifa? A haqqaiqs, realities. If you're in a turuq and accompanying someone who's not uh, teaching marifa, means marifa is what? Or haqqaiqs and realities, means you're not on a journey to the center and to the Divinely Presence and good manners and good adab because the real fight is on that path because you can't reach the realities if they don't teach you how to meditate and contemplate, you can't fight your inner de demons. If you don't meditate and contemplate, you become a person that says, we don't need to meditate, none of my people need to meditate and then they, they just lie and say horrific things and backbite and spread rumors, gossips and, and what kind of group is that? What, what is these people? Yeah, these are the people who stayed on the circumference and they never stepped towards the reality and that's the dangers. So the, the real way? You have to step on the radius, you have to be on a tariqah but the tariqah is filled with marifa and haqqaiqs. If no marifa no haqqaiq then people are focusing on the wrong things, inshaAllah.
Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Is there any reality to teeth breaking? Is there a spiritual reality or is it only physical? You have the meditation book and the energy book. What's in the title of our energy book? Oh, all four of you failed up in the front. What is okay? You don't know the energy book title? Not in Urdu. Zishan, what's the title? Timeless Reality? Yeah, that's the energy book, is Timeless Reality. No, it's well, well, what was the energy book? I, I forgot it too, so I failed. What's the, our, our book called? Yeah, it's, it's the Pursuit of Heavenly Power. Who? In the pursuit of angelic power. Pursuit of angelic power. So it should have been in that book about energy. What was the question again? Now you're distracted because nobody read the book. So the council of the four wise men, they didn't know the, the, the title. What was the question? As alaikum say, is there any reality to teeth breaking? Is there a spiritual reality or is it just physical? No, no, definitely that's in the energy book, right? This is hasad. You're an energy being. So as soon as you get food and ta'am and drink, what happens? Mawlana Shaykh said, Did he, do you think the food has energy? If it had energy, why you didn't get up and walk away? doesn't have any energy. The food itself is not an energy. The food is a source and, and a means that Allah heals the servant, nourishes the servant by a means. And it's a tawassul, means by means of this food into the mouth of somebody, it will nourish you and the body will begin to break down the elements that it needs from the food that's being eaten. But if the person is not clean, the person has hasad, all sorts of energies can attach onto that package and become like a loaded gift for somebody. The plate and the drink may be filled with horrific energies. And what happens most people? They don't ever pray over their food. So as soon as they put this into their mouth, I think you have 32 teeth, 16 one side, 16 other side, upper lower. These teeth are supposed to then be the first barrier towards these energies. So it means that everything now is happening on the importance of the mouth and the importance of energy. When they don't make du'a then the energy now comes to the teeth, comes to the mouth. If you get past all of that it'll go now down towards their heart. So the mouth is an extremely dangerous point of energy. And the energy just stays into the So then the most dangerous profession is what? Dentist, highest suicide rate. Why? Because they don't like mouths, they kill themselves or it's the energy of people that completely make them go out of their mind. So it's a very dangerous place to deal with because these are very powerful creation. So all their mouth and all their energies in the mouth. Then we understand the greatness of Prophet that came and said, oh before you eat put salt in your mouth. Why? It immediately takes every negative creature that's trying to enter into your mouth and provides a protection into your mouth, make du'a upon your food. So any negativity becomes angelic before you eat it so that the angels say, Ameen. And the angels begin to dress that ta'am and that food. Use your siwak, clean your mouth at all times so that negative energy is not in your mouth. That's the perfection of the siwak is a grounding. It wasn't a toothbrush. The du'a was, nifaqi fi qalbi wa shirki khafi, was not give me clean teeth but to take away nifaq, hypocrisy. And shirk khafi is uh, judging other people. So as soon as they go like this the negative energies pull onto the wood and come out from the mouth, the salt, the du'a and then they eat their food. 
so that the food becomes a nourishment of angelic realities and angelic power inshaAllah in the pursuit of angelic power. So again people have to read the books and people are new coming, these are all in the angelic book if you want to understand energy, the pursuit of angelic power which is an immensely powerful book on, on energies and qudra and then the meditation book on how to meditate and contemplate with complete like encyclopedia of meditation and tafakkur, inshaAllah. And we have it now in Urdu too, the pursuit of angelic power, inshaAllah. Everything from the sunnah is a fight for energy, immensely powerful, more and more understanding in the last days, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Is there any reality to coffee, tea, and caffeine in regards to energy? Yeah, that you use it for your ibadah so that you stay awake. It was discovered for that purpose for people to stay awake and to do their tahajjud and to do their their prayers and their, their awrads and their zikr. So, alhamdulillah, you use it to stay awake and to do your worshipness, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah The perspiration from the reality of Prophet Muhammad is our existence. Does this mean achieving the face of Allah Azza wa Jal is the only thing that is truly eternal? What was the first part? Uh, the perspiration from the reality of Prophet Muhammad The perspiration? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, is our existence. Does this mean achieving the face of Allah Azza wa Jal is the only thing that is truly eternal? Yeah, I think you're going to confuse people with that question. So maybe people don't know the, the background of that. Is that from Zishan? <laughs> you try to confuse him with the complicated questions. Perspiration, people will say, what does the perspiration have to do with anything? Yeah, yeah, that has to has to do with the the glass in which Allah is describing all this creation is in a lantern, Sirajun Muniran. And that all this creation is exists within a lantern. And that is uh, the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah. And that Allah merely gazes upon light and the beads of sweat that come into existence, entire universes come into existence by that reality. That's one reality and everything perishes but the holy face and that Allah's face will never be seen. And that's when we described life before that this holy face it is always gazing upon Wajik al the the holy face of Prophet in which the names and attributes of Allah reflect perfectly through that reality. So that's the hadith al-Qudsi for those who understand the shari'a. Hadith al-Qudsi in which the servant does their mandatory worshipness, they follow through voluntary acts of love. Allah then describes, I will become your hearing, your seeing, your breathing, your hands, your feet. Means so much so you say, Rabbaniyoon kun fayakun. Means that's the description of the holy face. So it's Hadith al Qudsi that Allah said, I will become and give you these attributes upon your face. But this is a description for Prophet because Allah is only addressing Sayyidina Muhammad. So Hadith al Qudsi is an is immensely powerful reality that Allah is giving to us of who Prophet is. When he looks at you, he looks with hearing, my Divinely hearing, don't think he's somebody normal. When he hears you, he hears with Divinely hearing. When he looks to you, he looks with Allah's seeing, what does that mean for somebody? So these are immense realities that when people contemplate and, and connect their heart to understand inshaAllah.
So we pray that Allah address us and bless us and il shirf al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa ali sahbihi kiram wa ala mashaykhina fi tariqat aliyat al aliyya wa sawi sadatina wa sadaqina al fatiha. Barakat shabbat ya Rasul Kareem. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.